Hi, 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 hi. I am finally getting around to filming this where we're going to talk about my initial top surgery consultation. Okay, so I suppose for starters, my consultation was on the 29th of November. I appreciate I'm late in doing this. Um, but anyway, that was around f five months, I think, after the referral was submitted. So my referral was submitted from the Sandyford Gender Identity Clinic in Glasgow and all of Scotland's referrals at this point in time go to the Manchester surgical team. Um, depending when you're watching this, that, that, you know, that may be different. Um, I, I don't know. But right now, anyway, that is where we go. Um, so yes, on 29th of November, which was a Thursday, as far as I'm aware, all their consultations are done on Thursdays, um, which I suppose is good to know for scheduling purposes. Um, but anyway, we, I, we, my mum came down with me so that I didn't have to go and travel down to Manchester by myself, just give me a bit of company for the day because despite the fact it's only, I don't know, three quarters of an hour for a consultation, going down from Glasgow, you're talking it's a full day event. Um, so we travelled down in the morning and that was fine and as seems to be now a thing for us, we seem to have issues when we travel, um, mainly when we hit Preston there was weather issues and speed restrictions and train cancellations and yeah, the travel aspect was not fun. Um, but thankfully we kind of planned to travel around leaving ourselves enough time to have lunch when we got there before my appointment. Um, so my appointment I think was booked for one o'clock, um, which is which is okay. Any earlier than that would have been far too early a start. It was an early start as it was. I think we were up about six on a train about eight. You know, it's it's a, it's an early start. It's a long journey. It's three and a half hours maybe there and back plus it's quite draining having a consultation so it's a long day so straight off the bat I would definitely say have someone travel with you just a bit of company to break up a bit of chat um, particularly if you're, if you're anxious over traveling or if you're anxious about medical appointments it's just it's nice to have some company and moral support um, the consultation itself was was fine. I mean, I, I, I want to say it was really nice, but it, it wasn't nice. But considering how uncomfortable I expected the entire thing to be, it wasn't. Um, we started the consultation with a brief chat for general clinical history building joys. Um, you know, chatting about just my health in general, um, medication I'm on. Um, my kind of transition background up to this point, I guess, just to get a up-to-date clinical background and feel for where I'm at in my life, you know, what I'm doing, all these kind of things. Um, it, it was fine, you know, it, it didn't feel overdone or unnecessary. It certainly wasn't awkward and prying. Um, is not necessarily the most comfortable thing to have to do, but you know, a bit of basic clinical background is kind of is, is a given. Um, so that was fine, and the whole point of the initial consultation is kind of to have a chat around procedure options and work out from the options what are possibilities for person in question so um, I knew going down that periareolar was not going to be a possibility for me which was fine so I kind of already knew 
it was going to be a double incision chest surgery procedure that I will be having at some point. Um, it does involve a chest exam at the consultation which is not comfortable being poked and prodded and measured and it it's uncomfortable but um, the consultant and the medical photographer who took um, obviously the pictures that form part of the case notes and for um, post-op comparative purposes etc you know, the, the, both, both the guys were lovely. They were very respectful and made it as quick and easy and pain-free as possible. Um, like, emotionally pain-free. It wasn't painful. It was just uncomfortable. Um, but it turns out that I could be uh, referred for either the double incision with the free nipple graft procedure or the double incision with the pedicle flap procedure. Um, obviously there are pros and cons to each. There are differences in the procedures and there's things to weigh up. Um, I'm not going to go into all of that in this one because I think I'll make a separate video as I start to properly weigh things up. I think I know which road I'll be going down but basically the um, pedicle flap procedure keeps a kind of triangular shaped flap of tissue with the nipple attached and that goes behind the top of the skin that's pulled down and the nipples pop through an incision um, so in that case I think he said about 60% certainty of retaining nipple sensation the other one is the free graft where the nipple is completely removed and sewn back on which obviously does not retain the sensation because it's not still attached to nerves um, the sensation is the biggest difference <sighs> potential complications can come from either so from the free nipple graft there is a potential risk of graft not taking which means you could lose your nipples which is moderately terrifying me um, but at the same time the pedicle flap because you've still got the layer of your skin with the hair follicles there could be hairs growing under the skin which could be more infection prone so that could be um, potential complications there's also um, potentially less flat flat chest which it, it depends where your priority lies, what's more important. So there's, there's actually quite a lot to balance and weigh up about the procedures, which is why I think I'm going to do that as a whole separate video and um, just talk about the consultation. So that's the executive summary of what we kind of chatted about with the procedures. Both are a possibility for me. Um, so now it kind of comes down to deciding what I want to do. Um, they did obviously take height and weight which was where the majority of my concern around the consultation came from because my weight loss hadn't got to where I wanted to be at that point and so I was concerned that that would be an issue but it wasn't um, the consultant was happy to proceed with my referral but obviously would prefer and encourage that I should still keep losing weight but I'm doing that anyway so everybody seems quite happy and we're fine um, honestly the worst bit was just finding where to go for the medical imaging because it's, it's not clearly signposted um, and I, I forgot half of the nurses directions as mum and I were wandering across the hospital grounds but we happened to walk out the door at the exact time as the photographer was heading back to his wee studio anyway and he took us so that was that was nicely timed um, but yeah that's, that's, that was the basis of the appointment and a follow up appointment was booked at the time for the pre-op consult where 
we'll discuss making a surgical plan in a bit more detail and kind of decide what procedure I'll go for, um, bloods will be taken, skin swabs, etc. So that involves two appointments, it's one with a nurse and one with the doctor, um, which at the point in time that this is being uploaded is like a week away. Um, it's about eight weeks after initial consultation that it falls, I think, roughly speaking anyway. Um, and then it just wait for a procedure date, which I currently don't know <laughs> how long away that's going to be. Um, hopefully I'll get a rough idea of my next consultation soon, um, but we'll see. Um, if you've got any more specific questions about the consultation, um, procedure options and whatever, you can you can always drop me a comment or send me a message and I will do my best to answer any of them. Um, but like I said, I'm going to do a separate video weighing up the procedures and talking about what's involved in the different um, chest surgery options but that's kind of yeah that's my whistle stop tour of my initial consultation I'm just really really happy that it's it's happened and the ball's rolling and we're you know we're progressing towards top surgery so we're getting there which yeah it's it's a really positive thing to kind of think that this year I will be having top surgery and I can actually say that with fairly confident certainty that that will be the case so yeah it's it's, it's good good stuff good stuff um but yeah i i've possibly forgotten the odd thing um so yeah if you've got any questions do let me know because that'll probably be how i fill in gaps um but otherwise i will see you next time <laughs> bye